August 3rd. 10 a.m. <laughs> District court court. I can't go that deep anymore because the toad boys. No. <clears throat> oh, God. This animation is reminiscent of something. What is it? The the court hammer going down? What's that thing called? The, the little bop thing, you know? Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Why is his name Butts? Come on. Oh my god, there's so many voices. The prosecution is ready, your honor. <laughs> the um defense is ready, your honor. The uh um Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, your honor. I'm uh a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. No way, you don't say, Judge. You don't say. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> the prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Buff, to the stand. No, I don't want to do Toad again. He looks so stupid. <laughs> um, Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were made to be there. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. I'm not gonna go. I'm not. I can't do the full Toad voice this entire stream. I really can't. It'll destroy me. I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. Okay. Bro's coping. What's it to you anyway? Ooh, Mr. Butts, will you describe generally what we mean by dumped? He sounds like a Simpsons character. What Simpsons character am I making this guy sound like? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. You just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The victim apparently arrives home from Paris on 7.30 the day before the murder. <clears throat> Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Uh... Daddies? Sugar? What is happening? <laughs> Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. I know the voices keep changing. I just cannot be consistent right now. I'm trying to, like, focus on what I'm reading. I'm trying to have reading comprehension right now, and it's just not working. He took their money, and he used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Wait a second. What do you mean what kind of woman this was? Uh, are we shaming women for... Okay, interesting choice game. I'm gonna stop him because I don't trust butts to be correct. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant. He did the point. He's doing the point, chat. He did the thing. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh, well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Oh my god, you idiot! Tell the truth. Er, uh, yeah! I was there. I went. She was an old man. So like I didn't see her. Well, your honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Watts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who was your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. Oh, he's on the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Okay, that's not great. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank's Sawit to the stand. Wait, is that the guy that killed her? I don't remember. I, I know it was a dude with black hair. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, yes, yes. Newspapers, yes. <laughs> oh, God. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. There's too many men. What is this account? I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I qua quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. <laughs> Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. 
The fall that Mr. Saw Sawit used was one of those, Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity to Miss Snellen's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay, I think there's going to be a contradiction with the time. Oh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And he's saying that he found it at, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, makes sense. I found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Why did his voice get weird? Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to err, er, no body, wait, there was nobody to err, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. Right, okay. <laughs> How do you explain this three hour gap? <laughs> Great job, white, R white. <laughs> You're white, right? A way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Okay. Okay, new testimony. The time of discovery. He's just gonna modify it to be a, a later time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. She couldn't have been watching TV because the power was out. The electricity was out. Right? Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. There we go. Let's go. Big brain. Shot big brain. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <laughs> Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yes, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. No, because the murder we weapon was the, the freaking, uh, the, the, the thinker. We already know it's the thinker. The thought. Wait, just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ooh, uh, you, you, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Literally the attorney king. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. Huh? It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? I think so, because how would he know it's a clock? Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. If the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Exactly. Oh, I, that's just not today. I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw. What the hell? <laughs> Yo, he's balding. Bald people, everyone run. <laughs> Get out. Ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. Okay, so it, it does announce the time. Mr. Big, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Oh, the time is off. So we're so saw what try to talk your way out of this one. You, the, 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 you forgot one thing. So, oh, what's he talking about now? What well, may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. If she took it to her... Wait, Paris. She arrived home from Paris the day before the murder. Maybe the time is different? The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Prove it up for you, Mr. Sawitch. Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Shut up. It's a pun! He didn't saw it. He did it. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty! <laughs> Woo! Let's go. Special thank you to Maid Lad Maiden members Coyote, Lena Lom, Navel, Hatsby, Delkes, Zerokesh, Blank, and Iki.